everyone, this is Vickerman and I promised you Dwarf Fortress and today we're going to get started with it. This is my wife Danielle. Hi. And uh, she is the Dwarf Fortress expert around here. That's right. <laughs> I, uh, I started playing this and she thought, she looked over there and said, that's a really weird game because you know if you don't know Dwarf Fortress doesn't have any graphics or anything like that and uh, in the default mode it's just a bunch of letters and characters for me to picture. It's kind of like the Matrix. <laughs> and uh, so she said, oh, that looks dumb. And then uh, she was looking for something to to do one time, to a game to play. And I suggested she play it, and she thought I was crazy. I only did it to humor you, frankly, because you seem to be enjoying it so much. <laughs> and so she did, and she got very, very angry. Yes, and, uh, at you and a stupid, stupid game <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. It was the worst interface I've ever seen. <laughs> she was very, very upset for me for making her play this. But uh, she she kept at it and turned her anger into uh, a drive to figure it out. And uh, she became the expert. No. Mm -hmm. Then no, I started she... getting angry because you didn't know the answers <laughs> to my questions. <laughs> her questions quickly exceeded my level of understanding. So, yeah, now she's the expert and... Uh, we're going to be talking about today something that I don't really know much about, which is uh, Advanced World Gen in uh, Dwarf Fortress. So what it, what exactly is that? Well, Advanced World Gen, uh, when you normally play Dwarf Fortress, you know, you just go and you choose your few parameters, your, what is it, your minerals and your savagery, mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, I don't even know it's been so long since I've used the, <laughs> the default one. But if you do advanced world gen, there's just a whole list of things you can modify, as is the Dwarf Fortress way. <laughs> and it can be a lot of fun to mess around in there. It can really be used to help create a more noob-friendly world if you're just learning Dwarf Fortress. So I want to show people how they can make it a little easier for themselves if they want. You can also do the opposite and make it a lot more difficult on yourself. Or just do things like increase your chance for dragons or volcanoes or just increase the chance that you'll get what you want. If you have something in mind. Like unicorns. And... Like unicorns! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think I've ever captured a unicorn. That's a hole in my Dwarf Fortress resume. I, I did do a, a good embark and solve some, but I never captured them. Oh, them. well. War I, got, unicorn. I got killed before that. By a unicorn? No, by an invasion. This was, oh. this was where, uh, when we had invincible undead people attacking. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that the thing to remember is this game is a work in progress. Uh, 10 years plus now. <laughs> and so, but it's the best game ever made. It's true. It's true. It's definitely the most complex game ever created. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. Uh, which you may, th you may think sounds a little weird when you think that there's no graphics, but really, really, uh, that's just the surface. You just have to see it. Okay, so... Okay, so this video is going to be a little bit of a tutorial for advanced world generation for noobs. I am not the be-all, end-all of advanced world gen, but I do always use it when I create a new world, and I know quite a bit. Um, almost all of this information I got from the Dwarf Fortress Wiki, so if you don't understand something, go there, it's there. But if you find it easier to follow along by watching someone do it, uh, hopefully this will be helpful. So the first thing I just want to point out, we're using, using the Lazy Noob slash Dwarf Fortress Starter Pack, of course. Um, if you are going to create a world, and especially if you want it to be a noob-friendly world, you have to remember that aquifers are not an option in Advanced World Gen. You have to turn them off here. So aquifers are kind of a pain in the butt. Do you want aquifers in your world? No, I never do. I think they're really annoying. So we'll just turn them off here. Uh, so that any worlds we gen won't have aquifers. Should we leave everything else on? Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. You can change these at any point during your playthrough, and it will have an effect. But obviously aquifers don't magically appear. Mm -hmm. At least I don't think so. I guess I've never tried. And they don't magically disappear either. I've tried that. Ah, uh, there is a dwarf hack command for that, actually. <laughs> Maybe I should do a video on dwarf hack, too. But, okay, so let's get started. Maximize. Okay. So... So if we did the create new world, that would be your default. But we are going to design new world with advanced parameters. So you can feel special. Be, feel advanced. <laughs> okay. I'm okay, what, what are we looking at? Can you zoom that in? Yes, I'm going to make this bigger so we all can read it. Is that good? 
What is this here? This is glorious. So if you look <laughs> over on the right, uh, uh -huh. we have a few starter ones. Now you can go in here and modify these and then save your modifications if you like. Um, and the, so they're roughly broken up by size and like islands will ha have the parameters set so that there are oceans on all sides. Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of size, or you can create your own within your own name, should that, that's probably what we should do, right? Sure. So new parameter set you see is A, so okay. A. Now and if you look up here we have its dimensions, right now it's set at the largest world setting. Uh -huh. Um, and it's, I think it's like UIP oh or something to move it, you know, you just start doing it after a while and you forget what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I-U-P-O. -I oh. So what, what size world would be like? So 257 by 257 is the largest, uh, and it goes down to what, 17 by 17 is pocket. Do you want to do some? What, what's like the middle? Uh, small is like 33 by 33. So, um, size, obviously the bigger, the more choices you'll have mm -hmm. as far as embark sites. So that's good. Uh, however, with the way, with the updates that he's made where history sort of moves, keeps moving as you play, you know, and when your liaison comes, he gives you updates. The bigger the world, that can cause, uh, lag spikes and a, and a drop in FPS. So if okay. FPS is your concern, smaller is better. Gotcha. So medium, small, what do you think? Uh, I, th I, mean, I think 33 by 33 is probably okay. Okay, so that's small. Um, so now it, a title, we can title our, just our parameter set. So if by pressing T, what shall we call it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, is it man or men? Ma man. <laughs> man. <laughs> I knew that. Uh, Although I do speak in the plural often. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple versions of you. Uh huh. Okay, so then we just titled our parameter set. And you'll see up there seed is random. Um, if you're just experimenting, there's no need to change it from random. So. If you use the same seed, will it give you the same world? Is that the idea? That is the idea. Um, the, there, there's, all, there's like the world seed, there's also the history seed. Uh huh. So, but because the seed's random, each time we do this, the world will be different, even if we haven't changed any of the parameters. I think that's what we need. Yes. So now we can also, it also says, if you notice beneath the dimensions, it says random name. That's the name of our world. Mm -hmm. So if we leave it like that, it will every time we do it, it'll randomly generate a name our, for our world. Or if you hate fun, you can <laughs> you can press N and enter a custom name for your world. I don't hate fun. Yeah, that's good that you don't hate fun. So now I'm just gonna which, which one is it? Is it uh, F6? Just so I have Vikerman highlighted, and we'll F6 just to save our initial parameters. Okay. And we're gonna, since it's highlighted, we're going to enter. Oh shit, I did it wrong. Hit A, abort. Abort. <clears throat> What'd you do? I I entered to create a world when I, you're supposed to hit E to enter advanced parameters. Ah, uh, I B, see. see. Okay, enter advanced parameters. Okay, so this is our big long list of things Six. we can change. Yeah. So seeds, we're using random mm -hmm. world gen seed, random history seed, random name seed, creature seed. So here is one of the easiest places that you can modify uh, Dwarf Forge just to make it easier or harder than however you'd like, is number of embark points. So how many points you can spend to give your dwarf skills, to bring items with you. Mm -hmm. So easy, hard, default. Uh, I mean, I lean towards the, the default. Well, that's not fun. <laughs> hard. I mean, if you if you do plan to embark in a t like place where it's hard to get farming set up initially, mm -hmm. but you don't hate yourself, you can increase your embark points to bring more food and drink along with you. Or... Well, why don't you increase it? I don't know. Okay. How, what's the range there? Zero to 10,000? Zero to 10,000. 10,000 might be a little insane. So the default is 1504. 
Apparently, I guess. <laughs> um, so to do this, it, it tells you which keys are at the bottom. You can use four and six to increase or decrease value. Or if you just press enter with it highlighted, you can type in your own value. So if we increase it a little bit, what, 1800? Yeah, that'll work. So that's like a little, give us a little boost. You can bring a lot more food for that many points though. That's true, you can. Or you can bring something stupid like five anvils or. <laughs> You don't need to be sensible. Weapons. Uh, end year. So how long will the world generation end or go until it stops? Again, shorter will give you better FPS. Um, however, something to consider is if you are interested in rocks or dragons, dragons take 800 years to reach maturity. So if you find a dragon and your world is only 100 years old, it's going to be a little baby wimpy dragon. <laughs> <laughs> which now, may be good. Which, yeah, which could be good or bad, depending on your perspective. You can tame the thing? You could. Now, I mean, I have never tried, gen an old <laughs> world for the purpose of dragons just because dragons are rare to begin with. Uh -huh. So, um, but if you want to give it a shot, you need to have an old world. Rocks, um, some people like to do rocks. Rocks only take 20 years to reach maturity, so they're not as bad. Mm -hmm. So, yes, shorter. It'll take us less time to actually process and generate the world. Better FPS. Longer. Might be more interesting world. Or everyone could be dead. That happens, too, sometimes <laughs> if it's really long. I thought that you fixed that problem. Oh, with the civilizations? Yeah, it was. Yes, because it was happening all the time. But... It's still certainly possible that a lot of things can die out the longer you roll gen. Gotcha. So what do you think? Uh, 1,200. 1,200. Okay. I don't know. Seems reasonable. There'll be dragons, I think. Maybe. If they don't all get murdered as babies, too. That's true. Oh, there's a cat on the desk. That's... <laughs> Um, so no pop, biggie. what is that? Population cap after civ create. Now I should say there's a huge list in here and I'm not going to talk about every one and some I'm not going to talk about because I've never really touched them and don't know what they do. And some I'm not going to talk about because it's really hard to use them without getting tons of rejects. You know how it rejects so many worlds before it finds them mm -hmm. that meets your parameters. Yeah. Um, you can, if you mess with things certain things you can almost make it impossible for a world to be created so there will be now the population af cap after civ creation how many um entities can be in a civilization and i've never changed it i don't know that it would make that much difference yeah and but here's here's too. where the next thing percentage beast dead from uh for stoppage so you know as the world generates um, beasts that are started with get killed in mm -hmm. battles or whatever. So if you don't want, if you want to ensure that you still have a certain number of beasts, no ma um, then you can set this number. So if we set it, so right now it's at 80%. So if more than 80% of beasts die before we hit 1200, world gen will stop. Okay. So this is kind of a safety measure. Yeah. So, if you're interested in more beasts, you might want to lower this, especially if you have a longer world gen. Well, I would rather there not be more rejections, so maybe increase it to like 90 or something. No, this won't re No, it won't reject. I'm sorry, it won't reject. It'll just stop creation and let you accept the world there. It'll stop the history. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. That wasn't clear, but mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. You leave it at 80. And then, so here's sort of the minimum, year to begin checking Mega Beast percentage. So if 90% of our beasts died, it wouldn't check until year 50. Mm -hmm. I'm, you kind of mess with this. I don't think it usually causes a big deal, but. Sure. Call on important historical figures. Uh, this isn't a big deal. Basically, if you change it to yes, it can help speed up your load times when you load in the game. Um, however, it means that Dwarves that are considered unimportant, like didn't do anything particularly notable, won't appear on things like engravings. And I think maybe mm. they're sometimes they're unnamed in Legends view. Mm. So if you're really into the minutia, you might want to leave this in no. I'm always into the Okay, minutia. you're always into the minutia. <laughs> so 
these variances we are going to I find difficult to mess with without getting um, a bunch of rejects. Okay. Okay. We are going to come back to volcanism because one of the things I want to talk about is creating volcanoes with flux, but I'm going to save that for the end because that's, I guess, the most advanced thing we're going to do. So all these mesh sizes, blah, blah, blah. I mean, feel free to go read about them and mess with them if you want. I don't particularly like to. So here's something that's fairly new that he added, poles. Uh, mm -hmm. You remember it used to be that you'd always have a north and a south pole, so you'd have temperature extremes mm -hmm. at the north and the south. Yeah. Well, now you can have north or south, so there'll only be one pole. Uh -huh. You can have both poles, or you can have no poles. You can't have an east and west pole, though. No, <laughs> I don't think so. How about no poles? No poles? So you don't want any extreme weather then? Uh, just the North Pole. Just the North? Yeah. Okay. So minimum mountain peak number. So it will reject any worlds that don't have at least this number of mountain peaks. Now we, we should remember that we're on a small map. So if we bump this too high, we're just going to have a bunch of unembarkable mountains. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I think I've bumped it in up to like three without a big problem. Of course, more of your map is unusable, but do you want to leave it at one? Or? Sure. Okay. I, yeah. Minimum partial ocean edges. So that means, you know, on the four sides of your map, the, the ocean will be touching your land, at least somewhere on that side, at least this number of so many sides. But it might go to the edge of the map or something like that? The, the actual ocean will? Yeah. Whereas a... Com Complete ocean means, will be completely enclosed in your world or something? It means the whole side will be ocean. So, like, if you had one, at least one of the northeast, south, I forgot, I've not... Oh, was... so it would be the entire edge mm -hmm. of the map. Yes. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that you'd want to require that. It seems like that would cause a lot of rejects there. Yeah. Um, if you care about oceans and you just want maximum number of embarkable places, I would set this to none. But obviously, if you want an ocean embark, you'd want to, you might want to bump it up. I, I like having oceans. Okay, do you want minimum of one partial ocean edge, or do you want more? Uh, so partial means that it, it will be on the edge, but not Not the completely. entire, yes. Maybe do two of those. Two of those, okay. So we enter, plus two, and enter. Okay, we're going to come back to that volcano. Mineral scarcity. Uh, so counterintuitively the lower the number the more minerals that's weird range <laughs> oh i see since it's scarcity yes range from 100 to 100,000 um i believe 50,000 is the default for like very rare if uh -huh. you're in the default kind of world gen and 100 is everywhere uh the thing to know what i why i like to always set it low is because the mineral scarcity doesn't just mean how much metals and gems there are. It also means how many different types. So mm -hmm. I like to have access to all the types. Just mm -hmm. uh, I need the, all the pretty colors, I guess. Sure. So I always put it to 100 for that reason. But you can be evil to yourself if you like. <laughs> Maybe do 1,500, a little more, a little more 10, than usual. 1,500. Okay. Max Mega Beast Caves. So if we want more big baddies, we should increase this. And these presets, I think, will be different depending upon your world size. Uh, I don't know. Maybe bump it up to, like, three, five. That's fine. Now, one thing I will say is that I've had plenty of times bumping this up where it's been perfectly fine. Although occasionally I'll have been, essentially wipe out all of my dwarven civilizations with all the beasts <laughs> I put in there. <laughs> so you might want to check your legends just to make sure you haven't murdered every dwarf <laughs> with mega beasts. Okay, semi mega beast caves. Eight, sure. Titan number. What is what is that? You know, titans of doom come and destroy you. Oh, uh, I don't know, maybe two. Okay. So these three, Titan Attack Requirement, Exported Wealth, and Created Wealth. So if one requirement is met, 
-hmm. then a Titan can attack you. You don't need to meet all the requirements. If okay. we put it to none, then that requirement is like it didn't exist. Okay. So, if you want Titans, but, you know, you want to make sure you're a badass, before that happens, you can bump up these requirements. That seems reasonable. Maybe make that uh, 200. A ta population? Yeah. You want 200 dwarves before a Titan will attack you? 150. What, what the world are you doing with 200 dwarves? I don't know. You like your FPS to die <laughs> in a fire, don't you? <laughs> okay. Now here's a great section for if you're a noob and you are getting destroyed by every sort of horrible demon. You can make it so they don't exist. So then, so this could be nice if you know you want to practice on the goblins, but all these demons are destroying you or something mm -hmm. like that. So, number of demon types. It doesn't correspond to like number of demons, like number of demon types. But if you set it to zero, there won't be any demons. Oh, okay. Okay. So do you want all this stuff? That seems like a lot of demons. Do you want demons or no? No demons. No demons. Okay, so vampires, sometimes I turn on vampires because sometimes they annoy me. Um, but So if you don't like your mayor always being a vampire, <laughs> you can turn off vampires. <laughs> do mayors have a tendency to be vampires? Yes, they do because they just spend all their time socializing and they live forever and they become best friends with everyone and then they murder them all. <laughs> and the same with werebees. I tend to not like werebees just because it feels weird in a dwarfy world, but... Um, should we leave them for maximum fun? Uh, I would say not vampires. No vampires. Okay. Because to me, werebees seems okay in a dwarfy world, but vampires don't. Okay. That's just my Vampires feeling. make good lever pullers, though. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, secret types is necromancers. So Ooh. if you're not a fan of the undead... You can put that to zero. Well, I, I think... I'm and also, if you just know you're not going to embark on an undead place, you can turn it off, and then there'll be more places you can embark. Gotcha. Uh, I'll keep it. Okay. So regional interactions is like making the evil rain that rains... You know, dwarf destroying ooze from the sky, and these are the different number of types. <laughs> so if you don't like places that rain blood and horrible pus, then you can turn, just turn off these well, regional interaction disturbance, evil cloud and evil rain types. I, um, I enjoy bloody rain and things, when, oh. it, when appropriate. When appropriate, all right. Okay, these minimum, initial, and final things we're not going to do anything with. Okay, so if you really want a river, you can increase these minimum river start locations. Uh, this doesn't mean that a river will actually survive through erosion, uh, but you can increase those to help give you more rivers. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, this cavern stuff is really, really helpful. I always mess with this. So, cavern layer number. There are, by default, there are three cavern layers, right? Yeah. Uh, you can change that. However, there are some caveats. Now, I, when I was researched, I was making some notes to make sure I didn't say anything wrong. I read something that if you have less than three, then there is no um, circus. Oh, okay. To be spoiler free. Now, I can't confirm that, but I read that, so I want to make sure, you know, use it your own, lower it at your own risk if you are interested in the circus. Um, but if you don't particularly use a lot of the caverns or, um, then you can lower it. And sometimes, some people say it helps FPS having less caverns. I don't know. However, if you set it to zero, you will not be able to grow any underground plants. So do not set it to zero. I think two, if you have two caverns, you, it's possible that you can get all the possible underground plants and mm -hmm. animals. I think, though not guaranteed. And if you have only one, you're not going to get the biggest, baddest of the underground creatures and such. Okay. Uh, so, how many caverns would you like? i just leave it three, I think. Okay. So, uh, m openness. 
and density. This is how your caverns look. Are they like twisty, narrow passages, or mm -hmm. are they like open caverns? Um, okay, I always have to look because I never remember exactly how this works. Okay, so if you have an openness of zero and a density of 100, it's going to be all twisty and narrow. Okay? So that's what it is right now. No, wait. Oh, this is a min-max. Yes, yeah, so if we set them both to the same. Um, if you have openness of 100 and density of zero, it will be as open as possible. Okay. Um, if both of them are set to 100, you can get places where some places are open and some are all densely twisted. Hmm. So, do you have a preference? I'm thinking crazy variety. Crazy variety. So set them all... So, because right now what it is, is it's going to randomly pick an openness and a density value between 0 and 100. Uh -huh. But if we change this minimum to 100, it's going to have to pick 100. Okay. So if you, we want maximum variety, if, we're going to get some, that way we're going to get some places that are all twisty turny and some that are open. So because, it, because openness will be 100 and density will be 100. But they'll run into each other, right? So yes. Like you might have a big open area with a bunch of twisty tendrils off to the side. Yes, okay. that is the idea. That would be cool. Okay, cavern, layer, water, minimum, maximum. I mean, if you set, if you if you put like the minimum to 50 and the max at 100, you'd have more water than usual in your caverns. Mm -hmm. If you put it at minimum 100 and max 100, you'd just be water, water everywhere. They'd be flooded, basically. Yes. If the default was between 0 and 100, it's going to pick a random number, and that's going to be... Is that for the whole cavern itself, or... Like yeah. It, for one cavern, is it going to be one amount of water? I, you know, I'm not sure, frankly, if it's different. I don't know. I, I feel like I'd rather have less water in the cavern, so okay. maybe put that down to 50 or something. Okay, so we'll lower the max to 50. Magma layer. Now, I found out the hard way... <laughs> If you turn this to no and you embark on a volcano, your volcano will be empty. There will be no magma. <laughs> so generally leave that on. <laughs> so bottom layer, I believe you also need for the circus. So now this I also love. The Z levels above the certain layers. Okay. This is, so Z levels above ground is how many layer, how many Z levels are between the topmost point on your map, mm -hmm. and just so how many air levels there are, basically. Okay. But it's a little deceiving because the highest point on your map is the highest point in, like, your region that you embark. So if you got a, like, a, if you don't actually embark on the mountain, but you have a, a mountain on your region, mm -hmm. you're going to get a huge number of air levels because it's going to take that mountain there. over there as the highest point. I usually lower it because I don't see any point to having a bunch of ground levels. Unless you want to build some crazy tower or something like that. Yeah. Then you would want to yeah. increase it. Uh, I like to build my towers out of the mountain that already exists. <laughs> so what do you want to do? Uh, I'd say just keep that the same. Okay. Now this. Z levels above layer 1 is the number of Z levels between the surface and the first cavern. Okay. So if you have your beautifully planned out fortress and you don't want to interrupt it by a stupid cavern like I do, <laughs> then you increase this and guarantee yourself enough space to mm -hmm. build it there. Um, this is not exactly accurate. It seems to be about plus or minus a few. Um, sure. But if you set it to like 30 or 40, you're going to have plenty of Z levels to build, uh, to build your fortress before you hit that first cavern. Uh, yeah, maybe we should put that to like 20. 20? Okay, then this above layer 2 is the be zeals between 2 and 3, cavern 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. 3 is between cavern 3, or 3 and the, the magma. And, like, I don't think anyone actually knows what Z levels at bottom mean. <laughs> Generally, I just mess with above ground and above layer one. Okay. That's fine. So, 
cave size, who cares? Number of mountain caves you can increase if you like. What is the what is the distinction of a mountain cave? <laughs> I don't know. It does I wonder if it has something to do with kobolds, because kobolds need caves. But I don't actually know, frankly. Mm -hmm. Um Okay, so number of civilizations. There are five civilizations in Dwarf Forges, right? Yeah. Dwarves, elves, humans, kobolds, goblins. Yeah. Okay. So if you pick in multiples of five, it will it will distribute e the civilizations evenly. Mm -hmm. Okay? Unless there aren't enough caves for kobolds and kobolds get skipped. Uh, if you're, it's not in multiples of five, it will distribute evenly up to the remainder, and then the remainder will be distributed randomly. Okay. So this is a small world. This is only going to give us one dwarven civilization, essentially. Mm -hmm. So if you want more to play with or to choose from, or you just want to maybe hedge if you're afraid your sieve is going to die out, you can increase it. I haven't had... Now, if you put this too crazy high, you can have rejects because there's not enough places to put all the sure, sieves. Because, sure. like, because certain sieves require certain parameters. But I haven't had a problem on a small map bumping it to, like, 15. Um, yeah, let's do 15. Okay. How about 300? <laughs> <laughs> so playable civilization required. Yes. Well, obviously not. <laughs> I mean, if you just wanted to look at legends, I guess you could put that in no. <laughs> not going to do these minimums. That's it. Okay. So the last thing I wanted to talk about. So that, that you can do a lot with that. You can make it easier on yourself. You can make it harder on yourself. Tweak it. The last thing I want to talk about is volcanoes. So, volcanoes have the problem, as glorious as they are, is that because of the way that the layers, like the rock layers work, it's almost impossible to have uh, a volcano where there's flux and where there's coal available. Okay. Except for marble, because marble's a little bit different. You can get marble down lower. So if you want, now this will not guarantee you it, but it will simply allow it to exist if you do what I'm going to show you. And the, okay, the reason that it doesn't work is because the layer where where coal and the flux is requires low volcanism, mm -hmm. and volcanism obviously requires high volcanism. <laughs> so and uh, so what we're going to do? So you see, you have these weighted ranges. Sure. We're going to not allow, we're going to nullify all the middle ranges. Okay? Uh -huh. So only the high, the lowest range of volcanism where we're going to find our flux and coal can exist. And the highest range where we're going to find our volcanoes can exist. Okay. Does that lock you out of other things, though? Nothing important if it does. <laughs> you know, I, I honestly don't know. It, I mean, maybe you don't get some stone types. It definitely doesn't lock you out of any metals or anything like that. Okay, so we're going to increase... What's that there? Okay, so this is the variance. So how how much difference there can be in our volcanism from a tile to another. Along the x-axis and then the y-axis? Is that what the, that, that means? I don't know. <laughs> I, whoops, whoops, the wrong button. I learned this, at, this is the only thing that was not on the wiki, where I was Googling and I found it on some shady looking forum <laughs> about how to do this. Okay, so now the one last thing we're going to do is where is minimum number of volcanoes? I did see that. I think you missed it. It's down there. The next page. There. No, wait. Uh, it's further down. Okay, minimum volcano number. This obviously, so in order to get our coal and our volcano on the same embark, we need two different biomes to touch each other, mm -hmm. basically. So we'll have to look for an embark where there are two different biomes to get that. Mm -hmm. um, but if we only have one volcano, we only got one shot at those biomes touching. Sure. So you can increase, so this is, by the way, this is how you want to increase 
if you don't care about flux or whatever, you just want volcanoes, this is this ma minimum volcano number is still how you want to increase volcanoes. Don't mess with the other Vulcan, Vulcans, <laughs> volcano uh, settings because those can cause rejects. Okay. This is where you want to do it, the minimums. So how many volcanoes do you want on our small world? Five seems reasonable. So five. All right. So we've, have we done everything we want? Uh, I think so. Okay. Is, is that all you wanted to talk about? So I think so. That is what I usually mess with. Like I say, these other, these drainage and all that jazz, I mean, flail away at it, definitely. And <laughs> uh, I've just either not had reason to touch it or have not been very successful with it. So if we're all done, we are going to press escape. Okay, and now we are going to press F6 to save this. Now, mm -hmm. if we're getting rejects, we want to change something, we can go in here, change something, and then just F6 and save it again. Sure. Okay, so now we're just going to press Enter to create a world. And you see we didn't have too many rejects, only 46. The planets of prophecy. Oh, uh, it's auspicious already. <laughs> and now we're going to run our... This oh. is going pretty quick. I, I, you know, I, I'm terrible. I usually choose 50, so this is like forever for me. I know, there'll be dragons I like, everywhere. I like to forge the legends with my dwarves, not have them handed down. Well, I see what you're saying, but by the same token, uh, it's kind of interesting to enter a world that is, seems old and then continue it. The Jungle of Virgins. <laughs> the crest of snakes. Sazir Nabel. You know, one of the. I, he probably did it to make it more readable, but at some point in these releases, which great, he's been releasing a lot, for long names in certain mm -hmm. menus, he just takes out all the vowels. So then it's like BKLG, and you're like, what is <laughs> this? I can't see its hilarity. It looks like it's about done. Yep, so it looks like we have not, we didn't get stopped early by Mega Beasts. Uh, so why, why did it not change the age? Do you know anything about that? Um, Sometimes. the ages have to do with the, with the percentage of, is it the percentage of the number of beasts dead? It has to do with how many fancy things are still left in the world. Oh, okay. So I think since we're in myth, I'm not an expert on this actually, but I, but to me, myth implies that there lots, is still a of lot of mythical creatures about. Now, are these little red triangles? Are those going to be the volcanoes? Yes, the red arrows are our volcanoes. So, if we would like to accept the planets of prophecy, can you zoom out, see the whole thing? Oh. The Jungle of Curls. So, so you see, here's our partial ocean edge, mm -hmm. right? We have our five volcanoes. Is this the complete world, or is this? Yeah, yes, because oh, this is okay. a small world. Yeah. I didn't realize it was quite that small. Well, <laughs> no, it's fine. You got to start your empire small. <laughs> the Mired Dune. Jungle version. Desert of Confederacies. Jungle of Tones. The Dune of Watches. Interesting names. The Land of Shells. Familial Hill. Finger of Cults. We could just read these all day. <laughs> Maybe we should have a channel where you just read Dwarf Worker's uh -huh. names. Okay, so we're going to accept? Sure, let's do it. Well, now we're going to have to offload things. It's a world full of myth and magic. Would you like to see its myth and magic? Do you want to see the legends? Oh, yes. Okay. Disclaimer, I know nothing about legends except how to get it to work. So if you don't know how to get it to work, this will be helpful. <laughs> Are we doing legends viewer then? Yes. So what we're going to, but first what we have to do is we have to start playing and we're going to go legends. La dee da. Okay, now we have that X at the bottom for XML dump. 
I'm going to press X and wait. Still says incomplete. Oh, you know, I never noticed that before. <laughs> Do you think it will change to complete? I don't know. Is it still spinning? Yeah, yeah. it is. So I always do short world gens, so it hardly takes any time at all. Well, it stopped spinning, and it didn't. It doesn't say complete. <laughs> so, try the P thing. Okay, so now for down to the bottom, it says P export map slash gen info. Press B. Okay, I think. I think it's done. It's not real clear. This is why this took me forever to figure out. Okay. Okay. Now we are just going to escape out of here. And we are going to open the Legends Viewer. And where, where it says Legends XML, we're just going to click these dots by it. And we're going to find the file. You should find it if you're using the starter pack in the Dwarf Fortress starter pack number, and then the Dwarf Fortress folder. And you're just going to look, let's look for a type. XML, right? Yes. So this is our XML file. Yes. And so then it has automatically, these other fields are green, and it just automatically found like our map gen files and things like that. Loading. It's loading. Now, I'm sure you can do lots of cool stuff. I barely know how to use this. Um, so this ends the tutorial part of the video. <laughs> but so we can see. So see, there were only two caves, so we didn't get three oh, kobold okay. civilizations. So we got an extra and we got an extra elf civilization. Oh, wow. I had to exterminate them. Can so, you do that in adventure mode? Uh. Fortress mode master I may be, but adventure <laughs> mode, no. So, I don't know. Let's the invisible dagger. Just click. This is all I ever do with it is just look at the sieves. So we can, so we can see our kings. We have a lot oh, of... The whole history of kings. Yeah, we've had a lot of turnover in kings. Except that, that last one looks like he's been around in a while. Oh, he's going to die and then our, the king will arrive at our doorstep right away if you pick that, maybe. Wutok Bootlight. So here we can see, that, look at all these people, all these elves that they've, the Owl of Lions. Hmm, they keep getting their butts handed to them. That's lines, not lions. Lines. Lions would be better. <laughs> Site history, so these are different sites they founded. So this still has a healthy population, 247 dwarves. And 50 llamas and 46 mm -hmm. yaks. Well, <laughs> we... So this unknown historical figure, I believe, if we had not called unimportant I don't think events, we did that. really? Yeah, I don't. I told you not to do that. Oh, you're right. I don't know. Then maybe. Maybe I'm not it's sure. been so long that it's lost <laughs> time. So that seems like a reasonable civilization. Do we have the gorge ones? of depression. <laughs> Climactic hatchets. <laughs> that sounds like something I'd like to be a part of. So is that their realm up there? Oh, yeah, this is... Yes, I guess. So now you know when we pick an Embark, it will automatically set us to the sieve closest to us, but you can change that. You just have to remember to change it. Which, so if you which embark in from. this area, you would be climactic I hatchets by default. I think so. I think that's the way it works. Zon Townbrass is the current king, it looks like. Lots of wars with elves. Yes. Oh my. Conflict of steam. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things going on here. Did I scroll past how many dwarves and things are there? seeing that. Maybe they're extinct. I think it says that they're extinct, don't you think? Well, oh, well, look. Uh, Wait, did the they year? die? Look at that. Oh. It only goes to 110. Oh, 
they've been destroyed. They're no more. Well, I guess. Huh. The Rampage of the Unknown Beast. Uh oh. <laughs> so, that's Advanced World Gen. You think you'll use it now? I will. It will let me customize things, mess around with people's lives. Isn't that what Dwarfurch is, is just about? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll be uh, probably starting a series on Dwarf Fortress in the very near future, so watch out for that. Should be a good time, full of lots of craziness, as it usually happens. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed and learned something, and we'll see you next time. Bye.